Happy Friday. The Lord bless you. This is Pastor Kurt. Uh, welcome Harvest Time family and friends. And God just has great things in store. Uh, we're going to talk further on 1 Corinthians 15 about the resurrection. And uh, if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead, our faith is in vain. But you know, the fact is, is Jesus has been raised from the dead and he's alive. He's alive because we're born again. He's alive. There's always victory, resurrection power for those who believe in him. And I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting from verse 12. And it says, Now if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Now, if your faith is empty, then you need to fill it with Christ and get born again and get resurrection power. Everything that Jesus puts his hand on is raised to life. He's the one that raised the sun up that, that is shining today and, and we're uh, feeling its radiancy. It's Jesus who's raised up, uh, you know, the condensation and uh, and what if the what what if there was no evaporation, and the water just stayed down and 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 was still and polluted? No, there is an evaporation. There is a resurrection. There is the fact that Jesus rose from the grave and he walked on the earth for forty days and he went up in the ascension. And now we're in that time, these ten days of waiting for Pentecost. So on the twenty second today. On Friday is, you know, paralleling history. They waited in the upper room for power from on high. You shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So there is a resurrection reality. And that's what we want to talk about today for this devotion. You know, President Trump declared today and announced to all the governors, open up the churches. He also said that it is essential, church is essential. And somehow those that were modeling this in the universities and in Harvard and in different places, they left out church as an essential. But praise God, President Trump thinks that church is essential, and you and I know that it is too. And there's going to be a resurrection, and we're going to get back to our churches and when we get back to our churches, hopefully in early June, uh, let's come back with fresh fire, fire of Pentecost, fire of a changed life, that Jesus changes lives. And, and we're going to talk about next uh, week in these Bible studies about the resurrected body, the fact that, that Jesus had a resurrected, perfected body, and he was all God and all man. And you and I are going to get a perfected, resurrected body. That's why we need to have hope. Hope today. Hope to cope. Hope for heaven. Hope for heaven on earth. And uh, just think about, uh, you know, soldiers who have lost limbs in, in battle. Or people that have been crippled in an accident. And, uh, you know, only in heaven is everything going to be perfected. But there is going to be a brand new supernatural body that's going to be raised up, that's going to resemble you in this, in this life, but perfected you that, that is in total submission to Christ and his goodness and his glory. Oh, hallelujah. That's what's going to answer everything. That's why men and women today need to get saved. We need to be resurrected from our from our death cycle, death, depression, trying to do things on our own, man trying to create government on his own, socialism, communism, all these troubles that man has brought upon himself because he can't govern himself. He's evil by nature. We're all sinners by nature. It's only when Christ comes into our heart that we get a resurrected heart. We get a new heart. We get a new mind. The mind of Christ that's been renewed, it's full of justice, it's full of mercy and compassion. But God has to make us new. 
And, and, and just a parallel to that is I've been helping a family in our church and they're, they're remodeling their mobile home. We put in a new floor. They needed a new gas line. So uh, we moved the stove and we put in the gas line. But I just want to make something that was very, very complicated and, and long and painstaking that when I put in the gas line, put the test on it, the, the, it leaked out. It leaked out because there was something wrong at the tail end of the pipe. And so I had to go and I had to take it apart and, and I had to come back and I had to crawl under the trailer with all the cobwebs and a, and a dead possum and, and find the leak and reroute the pipe and put the cap on the pipe and then, and then put the test on and praise the Lord. The, the test held. And, and then I hooked it up, but there was still a problem. It's because everything had to be made new right up to the propane tank. And, and, and in our Christian walk, a lot of times we come to Christ and we want him to make things brand new. And we fix something at one end of our life, but he has to go all the way to the core, to the foundation. There needs to be resurrection power. That's why it really is Christianity is Christ within us, Christ's lordship. And, and, and if there's not a resurrection, then we're not going to be changed. In other words, if we don't allow Christ into our whole life, to redo our whole life from, from top to bottom, but really from bottom to top, glory to God, so that we can experience His joy. And, and I'm thoroughly convinced that this coronavirus has been and you know allowed by the lord you know we live in a fallen world there's those fallen angels and they're always causing trouble those fallen angels are always coming into the to the weak wills of men and and those that are not born again and submitted to Christ they're they're subject to demons they're subject to 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 being uh you know persuaded bribed but it's only when a man or woman becomes born again that they have resurrection power to resist the evil. Resist the evil. The righteous man is an abomination to the wicked, and the wicked are an abomination to the righteous, so the proverb says. But we're also a fragrance of Christ to those who are perishing and those who are receiving eternal life. And I want to encourage you and all of us today to believe in the resurrection power of God. And uh, he's going to resurrect those jobs. He's going to resurrect the economy. He's going to resurrect the churches that are essential. But I believe that people need to really hunger and thirst now and, and realize what a blessing it was to go to church, what a blessing it was to go to the park, what a blessing it was to be able to go to the doctor and get all those things taken care of. But uh, this whole coronavirus has, has changed society. But for, for us who have Christ within us, maybe you, you need to be born again today. You're listening today and you're, and you're just struggling and there's no lift in your life. There's no lift in your life. Then there's a good chance that you need to repent and give your heart to Jesus or repent and believe him for more power, more power of Pentecost, get that heavenly tongue, amen, flames of fire, and uh, to renew us from bottom to top, to top to bottom. And, uh, and because guess what? We get a brand new inside, and one day we're going to get a brand new outside, a supernatural body. We're going to talk more about that next week. But believe in Christ and agree with me in prayer. Lord, we agree with President Trump that he is demanding now that the governors release the churches. They're absolutely essential. And we've got word from our president, the commander in chief, the leader of the free world. He said, open up the churches. And so, Lord, we pray for our governor Newsom and other uh, governors that are holding back. Lord, that you put the squeeze on them, Lord, and through pressure and through accountability and for their own good of their own soul and conscience to release the churches, release the economy, release the people, release the workers. Amen. And so, God, that you can resurrect this economy and uh, bring many people, Lord, uh, into a, a new, renewed joy and, uh, and a baptism of fire 
and an appreciation for Christ and liberty and that, God, that you're going to do a great work. So bless your people today. Loose hope, resurrection, hope, and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day.